Oh my god, that's a bright light. Wow. I mean, I knew I would be in the spotlight, but I didn't think it would be like right in my eyes. Uh, so I'll try to negotiate that. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, welcome Norwegian author Karl Ove Knausgård uh, to Yale. As I'm sure is well known to virtually everyone who's here, uh, Knausgård is the author of the celebrated and best selling six volume novel Min Kamp, My Struggle, which stretches over 3,500 pages and is widely regarded as one of the most important works of literature of our time. But before saying a few things about my struggle, uh, I do want to remind you that Knausgård has written other things and that he's still writing. So Knausgård made an acclaimed debut with his first novel, Out of the World, which was published in Norwegian in 1998. In the early 21st century, uh, Knausgård then served as a consultant for the new Norwegian translation of the Bible, uh, a work that can be seen as formative for his truly extraordinary second novel, A Time for Everything, which is partly a retelling of certain parts of the Bible and partly a history of the angels on earth. Uh, without giving away the plot, I can tell you that the angels gradually become so attached to this world, our world, that they become a part of it and end up as seagulls in Scandinavia. So you really should read this novel. <laughs> Most recently, uh, Knausgård has published an exquisite four-volume work uh, organized in accordance with the seasons, autumn, spring, uh, autumn, winter, spring, summer, uh, which are addressed to his uh, unborn and subsequently newborn daughter. The product here is to see the world anew by describing it to his daughter. The act of writing as an attempt to break habit, to elicit wonder and reflection even at the seemingly banal, always remembering that our lives are never banal, but that our understanding of our lives always risks becoming banal, and that the task of writing is to counteract this tendency. This constant striving with and against the gravity of habit is also the fundamental dynamic of my struggle. The first question for someone who hasn't read House Code is always, so why exactly should I read thousands of pages about the everyday life of some Norwegian guy? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, and the key to answering it, I think, is to see that Knausgård's writing doesn't actually force you to see his life with your eyes. Rather, his writing enables you to see your life with his eyes, with the level of attention that he bestows on a life. Knausgård's writing can give you new access to your own life, not necessarily because you identify with his experiences, but because my struggle performs a devotion to life as it is lived, a devotion that you can take up and practice in relation to your own existence. So if the statue of Apollo told the great poet Rilke, you must change your life, then the volumes of my struggle tell their reader, you can take your life this seriously. You can pay this much attention to what you are actually doing, and that is in itself a transformative act. Even when you seem dead to yourself or lost in the mundane events of everyday existence, you can come to recognize the ways in which you are indeed still alive, however partially and painfully. Thus, when Knausgård dedicates 20 pages to exchanges over breakfast with his daughters on a rainy Wednesday morning, or seeks to pry open every sensation and emotion that resonated in his 12-year-old self on the way home from swim practice one particular winter night. When he's doing this, he's not simply imposing his life on us. Rather, he's teaching us and himself how we can remember what we tend to forget. By describing the quotidian in painstaking detail, he opens our eyes to how much is going on, even on days when nothing seems to happen. And by resuscitating his former selves, he sensitizes us to all the vanished moments that remain inscribed in us, triggering memories that can open painful wounds, but also bring you back to life. This is why my struggle, which apparently is so devoted to the I, ultimately depends on you and what you do with it. Where Augustine in his religious confession sought to turn us away from this life toward eternity, Knausgård's secular confession performs the inverse movement. 
He turns us back to our lives, not as something that is our property, but as a form of existence that is altogether finite, altogether dependent on others, and where everything is at stake in what we do and how we do it. There, in the midst of our lives, is where Knauskort leaves us. And I'm so glad that he's coming to visit us today in the midst of our lives here at Yale. So please be, join me in giving a very warm welcome to Karl-Ove who will talk about why I write. Thank you.